At this point, I'm going to put certificates onto my Expressway E and my Expressway C. This is going to be necessary in order to get the, tra the traversal zones to actually become active between the E and the C. Something to note about the Expressway E is that if you want to do things like B2B stuff, if you want to do federation, if you want Cisco IP phones to register over your MRA, you're going to have to get a public signed CA certificate. And if you want to have the IP phones working, you need to go to the technical references, check the certificate authority trust list, and get a certificate from one of these certificate authorities that are listed here in this document. On the phone, these different certificates are already stored. And when the Expressway E presents its certificate, if it's signed by one of these certificate authorities, root certificate, then the Cisco IP phone will trust the Expressway E's certificate. Another thing to mention is that when you sign the certificates, whatever you signed for the Expressway C, you have to get the root certificate and any of the intermediary certificates uploaded to maintenance, security, trusted CA certificates, and same thing on the C. Whoever signs the Expressway E, you have to get their full certificate chain and go over here to maintenance, security, trusted CA certificates, then upload the root and intermediary certificates from the E over here on the C, allowing them to have the bi-directional TLS trust. With that said, I'm doing this in my home lab, so I'm just going to sign both the Expressway C and the Expressway E using my internal certificate authority on my Windows server. There's certain key usage values that are going to need to be in the certificate that I have uploaded to the, to the Expressway C and the Expressway E. If you don't have them, the Expressway C and E will actually reject the certificate and throw an alarm telling you that you need to have explicitly these different key usages. Going over here to this document, the Cisco VCS certificate creation and use on page 32, it actually tells you on the Windows server how to go through and, and duplicate a template and add the appropriate keys to the template so that way your, your, your Windows server can actually function as the, the certificate authority for your Expressway E and C. I'll minimize this again. Then I'll move back over to my Expressway E. We'll go to Maintenance, Security, Server Certificate. Same thing on the Expressway C. I'll generate a CSR for both of these. I now have those filled out, so I'll click Generate CSR on both of these systems. At this point, I can download the Expressway C's CSR, and you can see that it puts the host name inside the name of the file, which makes it very easy to know which server's CSR are you dealing with. That's really good for later. I'll save this to my desktop. Then I'll pause the recording while I wait for the Expressway E to do its thing. The Expressway E is done. I'll download its CSR now. Then I'll save its file to the desktop just like I did with the Expressway C. At this point, we'll move over to my local host slash cert serve because I'm working on my Windows 2019 server, which I have Active Directory Certificate Services running on. And we'll do request a certificate, advanced certificate request. Now at this point, I can go to my desktop and I'll do the Expressway C first since it's up top. We want to go ahead and open this up and pull out the certificate signing request. Then I'll plug it in here and we'll change this to my custom template that I created for my Expressways. Make sure you download it as a base64 encoded. If you do dir, you'll get an error message about it not being properly formatted or something. I don't I don't remember exactly what the error said. For the C, I'm going to download the certificate chain so that way I can get both 
the root certificate and the Expressway C certificate. So I'll do exp C cert chain. Now I'm going to go back and request a another certificate. This time we're going to do the Expressway E. So I'll open this up in Notepad++. And we'll get out that base64 encoded data. And I'll plug it in here. We'll change this to Expressway Template. Click Submit. Change this to base64 encoded and download the certificate. I'm going to name this the Expressway E server cert we'll save that here now let's navigate back over to the desktop we can see the expressway e server cert here and the expressway c cert chain i'm going to crack open that certificate chain and navigate to the certificates i'll open up the windows server root ca certificate here we'll go to details copy to file next change it to base64 encoded encoded x509 and then I'll save it here as the Windows Server Root CA Cert. Click Save and click Next. Finish. OK. Now we'll hit OK again. And we'll do the same on the Expressway C's certificate. Copy to File, Next, Base64, Next, Browse. I'm going to change this to C. Save that here. Click Next. Click finish, the export was successful, so we'll click OK and click OK. I can now close this out. I can also close this out as well, and I can close out my Microsoft Active Directory Certificate Services web page. At this point, I'm going to navigate back to the uh, Trusted CA Certificate section of these web pages. Once the pages have loaded up, I'll click Browse. And I have my Windows Server CA Cert right here. Now we'll click Append CA Certificate. You can see that the file uploaded. And we'll do the same over on the Expressway E, Windows Server Root CA Cert, Append Certificate. That one uploaded fine as well. So we'll go to Maintenance, Security, Server Certificate. Same over here on the C, Maintenance, Security, Server Certificate. And we'll click Browse down here for Upload New Certificate. Make sure you select the proper one. I'm on the left-hand side. That's my Expressway E. So I'll upload the server certificate data. Over here on the C, we'll browse and select that certificate for the C. And Upload Server Certificate Data. Then it's going to reload and we get a new certificate. So it's going to prompt us about issues with the error unknown issuer. My internal CA is not known to the trust store of my workstation or the key store, whatever it's called on your machine, whether it's Mac or Windows. So I get this error message that the issuer is unknown. I'll just accept the risk and continue forward. We can see here that the certificates were uploaded properly and the certificate info lets us know the expiration date of the certificate that we just uploaded. I'll end this video here. We'll pick up in the next one. There's only two videos left. In the next video, I'll finish out the configurations for this MRA deployment on these two servers. And then the final video, we'll talk about how to make the server, the Expressway E, reachable by the outside world. So I'll see you in the next video.